Hi! We're going to make a basket I saw in a book of antiques and it was, the title was Unknown Use Basket. <laughs> it looks sort of like a lantern. It's a very elegant shaped basket and makes a great center piece. Incredible with an ivy in it. So to start, before I start any round basket, I taper my weaver because once you get that round laid out there's no you don't have two hands to do your taper on your weaver so I've chosen the nicest softest supple 3 8 I have in my bucket I'm going to add a about a three inch taper to this and put it in my lap ready to weave now, for this, and I've already cut it, um, we need an odd number to get our weave to work properly. So I've split this one three ways after marking the centers. Center is very important to mark the centers, especially on a round basket. Once you get this started, you don't have any, any wiggle room because you have to hold on to these things. So the rule for a round basket that I, it makes it easy for me to remember is X. I lay these out in X. The one we cut is number three. This is T. See my little marks here? This makes a T. And then we fill in between. So the rule for me is X, T, and in between. There is uh, We're always putting the rough side up, so that will be the inside of the basket. And there we have it. Remember we had that piece cut the left hand's holding everything down at the moment, but there's a reason we had this guy cut. And the clothespin's helpful at this point. So the way these were laid out, we're going to go under this one and, and lock it in here. And because of the way they were laid out, we'll be going over and under the correct ones every time. It's a technique I was taught a long time ago and I've always used it and don't overthink it. So the other thing that I find important, the, a round basket's a little different. It's the first row shapes the basket. And it can be a little difficult if you aren't careful. Let's see, I almost moved that to the wrong place. This one needs to be here and this one here. So, if you look at those, if you can get this into every one of these openings, you'll be the same distance out from your center and it'll be a nice round circle. So here's what I do. My left hand goes on the basket. Always left hand on the basket if you're, left hand, if you're right handed. Okay, and I pull this in as closely as I can. Pull this right in, turn the basket counterclockwise with my left hand, lift up what I want to go under, slide this over, and this over, and under, and this over. See, I'm making a nice tight circle. It's all going on under the hand. Nicely done. And we're back where we started. We're going to treat these two as one for right now and it'll become apparent why later. So here we have a pretty good looking circle, huh? See that? And it's because we pulled in on the same amount all the way around pull towards that center. Now it's easy. Simply pull it to the center, turn, pull in. Pull right in there, nice and snug. 
We're gonna do this for four rows. Now I want this basket to be bigger than these pieces would allow if I didn't do the next step. So let's watch this four times. there we have it. This I don't mind. I want it to punch up a little bit. So in order to get this basket to be larger using the pieces I have, I need to split them and double them. You really don't want more space in your round basket than you than here. Or these pieces, this weaver would start to buckle. It won't look pretty. So what I do is split this each one. Now you can cut them all but I'm going to very carefully tear them. If they start to tear crooked then I go back and get my scissors but if you're gentle and you pay attention to what you're doing you can probably tear the most of them because there are 16 ends. You had eight pieces you've torn you've got 16 of them. So this is what we're going to do. So I've split all 16 ends. One of them I didn't do a great job on was being a little, moving a little quickly. So you'll see it when we, it goes by. So we went under, we're gonna go over. So the left side of each of these, we're gonna treat them all as individual. The left side is gonna be an over. We're gonna do that all the way around. And treat these like they're Two separate pieces they are from now on. They have been unfriended. Under. Wait a minute. Did you catch me doing that? I made a mistake. Over, over. Ah, two unders. Gotta be careful on this row. It's one of those places where you make mistakes. You'll find it when you get to the end. So, push that aside. Do it over. See? Oops. Somebody was being too fast. And this makes it allows us to be able to take a larger base than we would have been able to do with just the eight pieces without splitting them. And you're going to see why we split three at the beginning. Because if we'd only split two, we'd have been looking to split our halves in half, and that doesn't work out so well. So we're gonna go over the first one and then under this one, and we're right back where we needed to be. So that's why we had three there that we split at the beginning. And now we do the same thing we always do, over under all the way around. After you pull these apart the second row, you won't need to do that again. They'll stay apart. So I'm going to put a few rows on this and I'll get back to you. Okay. The magic of video. I ran around this thing and did four rows. An additional four rows. And now we're going to start going up. So we add a piece, and if you've never added a piece before, we're going to go back four pieces, four spokes, lay it in here, pin it, probably pin it because we're going to start going up. Now the first row will hold one half of the pieces up, and the second row will hold the second half of the pieces up, and the third row will hold it all together. So for now, your goal is just to stand these pieces up. And I, again, I, I'm using my right hand to pull them up, and my left hand to keep them where I just put them. And there you go. Yep. So 
I used to have weave on a cutting board. So I would use a knife and simply start at the center and draw the knife out and I would have nice, straight, smooth pieces, not jagged or torn. What I do now is sell baskets with a primitive finish. So I don't need them to look quite as perfect. But if you're looking for very, for a nice, regular look, spend a little more time doing those splits or cuts. So here we are, been around once, and here's twice. This is making it stand nicely. And you know me, if you've watched my videos, I need to get this in my lap because I dearly love a lap weaving project. Not too bad doing this round one because the weaver's narrow on the table but I find that my hand actually dictates it, it can um, force the basket in or out so when it's on my lap I don't have a, uh, I have more control now ah I was I nearly went over two there see that I need to do it this way so I'm just going to go ahead and weave probably four to six more rows, um, simply up. If this were my lap, whoops, I missed one again. It's kind of hard to weave under this, my video. So let me see what I can do and I'll show you where I end up. Okay. So what I did notice as I'm weaving around that I wanted to tell you about is putting some tension on your weave. As you're coming up, it will go out more than you'd like. So keep a little tension right here on this. It's easier when it's in your lap because your lap is holding it, but just some tension on it. Not a lot, but make adjustments as you come around. I pull to keep these in place and keep them packed down nice and tight. So, tension. A little bit of tension on that with the left hand. Give it a snug every now and again. Keep it going up. I think we're going to do a few more rows and then go in. I'll be back. Okay. I've come around, I've done, we did four rows and then we split. We did four rows, we turned up and I've done eight rows. So it's 16 rows. I'm going to start coming in. So what I want to do before I do any of that is pull on these here. Let's see, go around my basket where there's any holes or gaps. I just want to pack this nice and tight. It's easier than pulling the rows down with your fingers. Okay, see so there's a little, little gap right there. If I pull on this, it works that loose out. So now, we're going to start going in. And in takes a little bit more work. We spent all that time putting tension on it to go out, and now we're really gonna put some tension on it to go in. So this is what I want you to weave. I want you to pull a little bit and this will be in your lap it should be a little easier use your four clothes pins just put some tension on pull in I'm gonna snug this in so we have a nice little hourglass shape when we're done see there we go find some more clothes pins while I'm right at and do this every row for probably four, maybe six rows. I'll let you know. Let's see how it works out. I guess I've decided six rows is going to work well. And what I noticed is that I keep this between my knees, so it gives me something I can hold it with when I give this a little snug. Much easier than weaving on a table, you can lose the clothespins. So every time I stop, I do two or three places at a time, and then I give it a little snug. This finger holds it and keep going. So that's my six, and now I'm going to 
weave straight up. And that requires giving these just a, a little help to stay out. A little help. They, we've been leaning on them, they're going in. We're gonna give them a little help to stay out. So this is all about shaping. It's all about tension and shaping on this basket. So no more in, we're going to go up, straight up. And it's a little bit of work, but it's worth it when you're done. You have a beautiful basket. Hang in there. Well, we started our basket with a taper. So I've added, hmm, let me see, 16 rows all total. We added two, four, six, and then started going straight up with two, four, five. So here we are. Nice looking little basket, round basket, great shape. But to end, we are going to taper. We taper to start, we taper to end. So I go past the end here and taper. They usually do the same, about a three inch taper. Weave it out to the end and start tucking. And tucking goes something like this. Bend it over, make it fit, scoot it right down in there. Can you see inside? Let's see if I can. We get a few done here. What I'm doing, personally, I use my nail to push this in here or a tool, when I can find a tool, make an opening with my tool and push this in right here and go all the way around doing that. every other one. You can bend every other one over. Let's see if I can make it easier for you to see. Righty. Bend this over so you get a nice crisp bend. Get in here. Push. I'm pushing with this from the outside. Whoops. You can also use the tool. The tool's handy. Here. Bend. And there. All the way around. Well, I bent those all over and I forgot to tell you to cut them off. I went from bending to cutting, like I automatically do. So let me show you about cutting. Sounds kind of silly, but there is a way to cut properly. Hold your basket in your left hand and bring your scissors in close here when you're snipping something off. You can get closer than if you do it this way, your scissor gets in the way of you getting a nice, close, snug fit. We don't want our basket to be like a bowl. So this is the time I take to put the dent in my basket. There we are. See how that dents? Now for the rim. Okay, last step here. I'm gonna put a rim on it. So where the three split is, is the back. So my inside rim is going to be across from that. I happen to be using 5 8 flat oval. And I pin this rim. This is a 3 8 This is 5 8 flat oval. So I pin it up. I only want to cover that top rim. So pins hold tight so it fits nice and snug here. And pin, pin, pin all the way around. So there's a back. And I call that the back of a round basket because that's where we, if you had color, you'd change color. I don't think this basket needs color, but that's where you start and stop and all the not so pretty things happen there. So I'm going to overlap about three inches. I had done a taper here. I guess I didn't show you. I had taken the top down a bit here and now I'm going to take the bottom off with my knife. Make what I think they call a scarf joint and fit
put it here so that it makes a nice gradual overlap. Now for the outside, oops, I didn't pull that quite tight. For the outside, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. Again, taper that top a bit. I'm so used to doing these things, I forgot to show you. Let's see, piece of round reed. If we simply put this on here, you would have an unattractive spot there. But, I saw this trick back in the 80s, done by Native Americans in New Hampshire, the turn of the century. And they had used some round reed as filler on their fancy baskets. So I figured I could use filler on my fancy baskets. See, doesn't that look much nicer than that gat gaping hole? Seems that everybody does it now, but I've been doing it for almost 40 years. And I really like the look. There we are. So it's sitting exactly on top, as my friend Joe called it, the knife edge. And the three, the five eighths is covering the three eighths with this in the center. Here, I just want to, now there's no room to overlap in there. So we're going to cut it to match. I'm gonna overlap here. And carve this. I do it after I've got my rim in place so I know exactly how much I want to take off and where. So that we have. This, oh, I gave it too much. Let's just snip it off so it fits better. Here, here, pin, and there we go. Now I've soaked a lacer in advance, and I found the, one of my, the best ones pieces I have because I'm gonna drag it through each of these, these spots, like 60 some spots. So I want it to be a really good piece of material. What I'm going to do to start this piece of material is go inside and like we did the ends, just find a home, push it inside and park it. Um, I want to find the top side. First of all, I'll make sure it's long enough because I don't like to add on to a rim. I don't like the looks of it. One, two, at least two times around and because this is so close I think more like two and a half times around the basket should give us enough just want to make sure so let's try this camera angle and I want to go in every hole right underneath the rim is that three eighths can use your tool to make an opening. Push that back in there. Go in. I perk this while I pull this through. Pull. And again. Push this here. I'm pulling with this hand, but I'm also using that thumb to give it a little help. And I'm going to go all the way around this basket until I hit that split. And then I'll show you what happens there. Okay. I came around to where, not where I split, but where I tapered. Actually, it's near this split. But where we have that taper, we have one piece under here. And we have that little bit of a taper, remember? And we could drop down into this hole and this hole until we, we get. But I don't like that look at all. So what I do is make an opening. I make an opening right under my rim. It's not going to hurt anything because we have another whole piece up in here. And that makes your rim much smoother look under the rim. So remember when you come around and it seems like you've got to go way down to here. Remember, ah, we're going to go Gonna make an opening, our own opening. 
Now, if you didn't taper and you're down here, it means your rim slipped up. And you've got to check and make sure you have a piece of reed under that rim. Because sometimes our rim slides up and we're weaving two rims and no basket underneath. So beware of that. So I'm at the very end, the very, very end. And I'm going to use the dreaded glue just to be better be safe than sorry on this one. And I'm going to put this here. I've got everything nice and tight. Now I want to open a space between the rims just a tiny bit. Put this in, wiggle it down. Not much wiggling involved. Put this in between the rims here. up just a bit on me. It's kind of hard working around the handle. Usually this handle goes in much later. There's no working around it. Um, these snips in here and cut this right under the rim. You can't even see it. And we're done. That's our rim. So I hope you enjoyed our unknown use basket or lantern basket as I like to call it. It's a beautiful centerpiece. Please keep following us on YouTube. Visit us at basketsbygin.com, Baskets by Jen on Facebook, and Baskets by Jen on Instagram. Over the summer, we're planning to do a video a week something to keep you looking forward for the weekends. While your children are in the pool, you can sit with your reed in a little kitty pool and weave away. Make all those gifts. Thanks for watching. Happy weaving and enjoy the rest of your day.